What's going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you another one of my 2014 NAWCQ hat format deck profiles. The deck I want to bring you today is Koakimiru Fire Fist, or Koaki Fist as some people call it. It's a really cool and interesting deck that I believe Jeff Jones popularized back in the day, and since then with modern hat formats, people have kind of innovated on it, made some changes, tested out some cool things, and the deck is still fairly standard, but overall really cool, interesting deck, and being able to play Kokimiru as something that isn't necessarily just rock stun that I feel a lot of people knew Kokimiru from is really, really cool. So anyways, let's get straight into this deck profile. So starting off with the monsters, we play three copies of Kokimiru Urnight. This is the best one. So the thing with Kokimiru's is they all have the effect that during the end phase they destroy themselves unless you discard an iron core of Koakimiru from your hand or reveal whatever type they are. So for example, these are beast warriors, so you would have to either discard an iron core or reveal a beast warrior monster from your hand to prevent the destruction of them. And then Urnite has a soft once per turn, so if you have multiple, you can activate multiple, a fact where um, you're able to reveal an Iron Core of Koakimiru in your hand and special summon a level 4 or lower Koakimiru monster from your deck. So it basically is sort of a 1.5 card uh, rank 4. It also has 2,000 attack, which is really big on a normal summon, so really, really strong card. Next, I play two copies of Koakimiru Crusader. I tested three, and three was all right, but two was definitely the right ratio. Same normal Koakimiru effect, and then the regular effect is that if it destroys a monster by battle, you're able to add a Koakimiru card, keep in mind card, from your graveyard to your hand, so allows you to you know, for example, get back your Urnites or get some of the other cards you'll be seeing later on. Really good card. Again, 1900 meter. So very, very strong. And then the last Koikimiru monster you play is one Koikimiru Ice. There are other Koikimiru cards you can side, but for the most part, this is the more Beast Warrior focused uh, version of the deck. So since the others aren't, even Ice is not. Um, you're just trying to stick to these monsters. And what Ice does is, again, a 1900 with the normal Koakimiru effect, but then you're able to... Um, well, I guess Ice is slightly different because instead of, like, for example, revealing a Beast Warrior, or in this case, an Aqua, you can also reveal a Continuous spell to keep it alive, which is important because you're going to play Tankies and stuff like that. Um, but its regular effect is you can discard a card and then destroy a special summon monster on the field. So this kind of acts as a like board clear in a lot of ways. Not a board clear, but like spot removal, I guess, if you want to call it that. But that's it for the Koakimirus. After that, we play two Fire Fist Bear. This card needs no explanation. One Gorilla. Uh, I actually really like Gorilla. Um, if you don't know what it does, is it basically sets a fire formation spell or trap when it destroys a monster by battle, and then you can get rid of your uh, fire formation spell and traps that are face up to pop back row. And then I guess also to pair with this, I am playing one copy of Wolf Bark just to bring back some of your things and make rank fours. And then lastly, for the monsters, I play two copies of Max C and two DD Crow. Um, if you guys have seen my other videos, you know that I prefer ratios of twos for a lot of different decks, specifically because it gives you more option. Also, Max C in the main still feels kind of weird to me just because some decks it's really, really good against, and other decks, like for example, Bujins, it's almost dead against them or even like hands and stuff, or like hat decks, it can basically just be an upstart, so it never really feels good. So I think just two and two is the best ratio. Uh, Crow is just in general 
good against most decks in the format in some shape or form. So having a good mix of both kind of gives you option in the deck. Moving on to the spells, we play three copies of Diamond Core of Koikimiru. During this time period, this was the newest card for the deck, and it did everything for the deck. Um, it lets you add a Koikimiru card from your deck to your hand, so it can add the Iron Core, it can add any of your monsters, and then it also has an effect that you can banish it from the graveyard and for the rest of the turn, Koikimiru monsters you control cannot be destroyed. So uh, that also protects them in, uh, from card effects and stuff and also just from their own effects. And then two copies of Iron Core of Koikimiru. This obviously is the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, the effect in the grave can come up, and it's during your draw phase, if it's in your graveyard, you can add this card from your uh, grave to your hand instead of drawing, and or you can send a Kokimiru monster from your hand to the graveyard to add this card. So this card is recyclable, so you can kind of get it whenever you need it. Three copies of Tenki searches almost everything in your deck, and one copy of Tensu for additional normal summons. Uh, works really, really good with Urn Knight since I said it's a soft once per turn. So if you're able to have Tensu plus double Urn Knight and the core in hand, you can kind of just pop off and basically break any board your opponent has. Two copies of Duality. This deck plays at a kind of a Bujin pace in some cases. So even if you just have a slower start and you want to kind of control the game, you can duality into more traps and stuff. You don't have to go super full-on aggro all the time. So two, I think, is perfectly fine. Similar to Bujins, I play the same ratio that I like in Bujins of two Forbidden Lance and two Forbidden Chalice. Just really good going second options, but they also act as battle traps and just really good cards overall, being able to protect from monster effects and spell and traps. One Book of Moon, one Dark Hole, and one Soul Charge. Uh, the deck has like Wolf Bark and things to recycle your resources, so one Soul Charge is completely fine. You could bump it to two if you really wanted to, but really isn't necessary. For the traps, three copies of Breakthrough Skill, just the best kind of negation you can really have. It basically counts as six copies of negation. Uh, really, really good. And then lastly, just some power one-ofs. Uh, Compulse, Torrential, Bottomless, one Blackhorn. I've considered bumping this to two, but I think that it's just fine. And one Warning. Uh, real quick, also, I've tested um, Card Card D in this deck as a monster, kind of just to play it at a slower pace, but I found that I didn't really like that too much. And then I've tested a few other things in the deck. I've tested like Wire Taps, more Max Cs, more Crows, but overall, I think the monster lineup is probably as good as it's going to get for the time being, so. If you want to test with more things, go for it. Another cool thing people have tried is playing like Tour Guide, um, being able to Tour Guide into Tour Guide, make Invoker, and an Invoker can then summon your Ur Knight, and then you can make another card. But that loses really, really hard to Max C, and it also loses really hard to Breakthrough Skill, which I'd say at this point, like 70% of the format is playing. Um, so I, I think. Honestly, I, like from testing it, it wasn't the craziest thing, but it is something to try if you want. Moving on to the extra deck though, one Bujinti Kagetsuchi, one Karen Gorgon, two copies of Tiger King, being able to just blanket negate all your opponent's monsters, and I guess it technically you can negate yours too, but you're mostly all Beast Warriors, so that part doesn't really come up for you. Um, the main effect being able to set your uh, tankies and Tensu really, really strong, really good. It also has an effect that can summon things from deck. It doesn't come up that often because you're not playing that many fire formations. One Black Ship of Corn, two copies of Honor Arc. Really, really like this. Usually I use one for the effect and the other to play through heavy back row. 
one Heartland Draco, no explanation needed at this point. I've put in so many decks, and with the continuous spells and stuff, just really good. One Diamond Direwolf, one Exiton, one Brotherhood of the Firefist Cardinal. This card is really good, but the problem with it is it specifically needs Fire Fists, and you're only playing three, and so it's kind of awkward. It has really big defense, and the effect to shuffle things is really, really good, but it doesn't come up that often. One Digusto Emerald to put back your Crusaders or Urnites or, you know, any other resource you really need. Dweller, Cowboy, and Rhapsody and Berserk basic ending towards the rank four lineup because that's like 90 percent of what you play in the deck anyways uh but yeah that is the deck profile if you guys have any questions about this deck such as cards that you should be siding siding patterns gameplay anything like that definitely let me know in the comment section i'll try to make a video on that and as always i do appreciate if you guys drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and anyways guys i will see you in the next video